What's up, VC? Uh, let's be quick about this, because if you're like me, uh, you check in for Record Store Day, or this year, Record Store Days. Uh, you know, we're in a time of COVID and things are wonky as all get out. So, uh, day turned into days, and um, all right, let's do this. So, I got an excuse here to show Record Store Day finds, uh, which is minimal, and then other stuff around it, as well as, uh, I don't know how to label this, because uh, I'm being deceitful if this is just straight record store day finds. Uh, recently, here in Greenville, South Carolina, we had the uh, uh, annual, semi-annual uh, punk flea market. And there's uh, uh, jewelry and people with uh, vintage clothing and taxidermy and original art, posters, stickers, t-shirts, whatever. And there's always a um, uh, record booth and uh, people usually hold out. Uh, to put their punk gems that usually don't go to the stores out. I didn't make it that Saturday, made it that Sunday. So uh, a whole entire original Ramones collection was picked over, if I'm not mistaken. I don't recall right. But uh, whatever. Coffee's setting in. So uh, hopefully you got your cup of coffee and maybe you're going out right now if you're in the West Coast. Or uh, maybe you're just waking up, sleeping in, whatever. But uh, so be it. Your boy's sleepy and I'm just going to hammer through these. So, uh, everyone knows this. I don't have to speak on this too much, because this is one of uh, everyone's big up there, right? So, this is one thing on a side note, uh, off this album. Uh, one thing I'm going to start doing, uh, I love these vinyl storage solution um, bags. I'm not paid to say that. Um, yeah, this this something I buy with my own money. You buy whatever you like, it's all good. Uh, there's the 4 mil super uh, single pocket crystal clears are amazing. And uh, I think I'm just going to get in the habit of putting some steam on the hype stickers, uh, stealing them, and that way I could, uh, usually I don't enjoy my gatefolds to their fullest extent. And if I didn't do so, in the gatefold you don't notice that even though the record's kind of flat black, the teardrops slash uh, blood drops, I assume that's blood, um, are almost like glossy. I don't know how well that showed up. But so, uh, the inside of these guts aren't as amazing as you might think, but it's still cool to have and see. So, uh, also the art, well, not there. The art continues. Really well packaged. The art continues. And if I were just to pull one of these out, uh, kind of a, uh, Blood red, brick red, red orange color. Um, that's showing a little bit darker on camera than in person. And then on the back of uh, both of these inserts are some words. A whole lot of words for people that enjoy uh, such a thing. Alright, so that's it more or less. That was my goal for this Record Store Day drop, so to speak. So if you want to tap out right now, I'm not mad at you going to tap out. But I did find some goodies. Uh, in the theme of finding Miles Davis for Record Store Days, uh, the first drop I did this year, um, I uh, landed a gang of just really, truly dead mint, dead mint, minty, minty, dead mint, Obi strip Japanese Miles Davis. This is not that grandiose uh, along the same lines, though. Uh, a gap I'm filling in a Miles Davis collection. So this is the uh, Sorcerer. I picked this up recently. But uh, if you can excuse me, there we go. There's outer sleeve. Uh, fairly clean jacket. Uh, a little bit of browning on the back, but nothing severe. But most importantly, is a clean Columbia 2 eye. So uh, happy for that. That's all I like to buy my jazz is uh, nice and clean. I might not be as picky in other genres, but jazz is one of those. All right, so I found that. Since the first Record Store Day drop, if you're still with me, I never showed anything for the second. And for the second, I went out, I believe they were both for the second, I wanted um, the Groundhogs, and I wanted Josephus. I found the Groundhogs after the fact. One of the stores here in town uh, isn't advertising that they're doing Record Store Day stuff. They're just kind of put it on the mix. And uh, one slipped through the cracks, and that one is this Groundhogs. I don't believe I'm doing any editing to uh, save time and just get this one up here. But uh, the Groundhogs are kind of a blues, rocky, psychedelic, uh, I, I would not say hard and heavy, but just uh, 
I also wouldn't just want to brandish them with a classic rock because that's that's almost like backhanded compliment nowadays to some people. But just um, you know, garage rocky, uh, late '60s, early '70s rock. I dig it. If you find their stuff, acquire it. Uh, I have some OGs of other albums, but for whatever reason, this one's hard to find. So I was super happy for Record Store Day of repressing this one. Uh, the track on here to validate it having any kind of ties to being called psychedelic is Cherry Red, track one, side two. Um, and that is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on one album or another, covered by um, Ty Seagal, who's a contemporary uh, psychedelic music wizard. And I guess we're keeping up the theme of red. This is more of a flat red. Uh, looks pretty cool with the center label. So there is Ye old Groundhogs. And everyone's already probably seen this. On account of previous Record Store Day videos. Josephus was not landed. But when I went out and did my rounds uh, recently, uh, I stepped by uh, Captain Floor Records here in town. And I was like, hey man, Joe, you don't happen to have any Josephus. Nay, he did not. But uh, almost serendipitously, I stumbled into this one. Uh, I am a little thin on the brown acid comps. Uh, but I don't know what they're on, like... 12, 13 now. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. Uh, people are going to know better than me. Big fan of everything that Ride and Easy is doing. I don't know what Preston this is. Some people are going to know better than I just by color placement. But you can tell there, there's the Ride and Easy logo. This kind of looks slime green on camera. But this is a darker green with a, a marbling, if that barely shows up on camera. But the serendipity and lies in the fact that uh, side B, track 5, the closing track, is Josephus. Hard luck. So I'm slowly building up the brown acid comp as I find it. This is one of those things. This is someone probably bought this thinking, oh, this is going to be cool. I'm going to get into psychedelic music. They didn't. They opened it. Still brand new condition minus a shrink that's not absolutely necessary for less money. So I'm a fan of buying my records that way. That's how I'll probably accumulate the brown acid comp uh, over the following years. All right. To get down to the um, punk Flea market, punk, punk rock, flea market, whatever you want to call it, uh, happened just recently. Uh, this is fear, more beer. Uh, yeah, this is a, quite the juvenile transition moving on from Miles Davis, uh, and it does not have the musical complexity of some of the you know psychedelic uh, gems that might fall within the um, brown acid comps. But uh, sophomore album, if I'm not mistaken, 85. So... Uh, Punk this clean isn't an everyday fine. It's got a couple of finger uh, smudges there. It could need a little bit of a better wiping. But uh, the scratches aren't there. And um, Restless Records, white label here. Um, pretty cool. Not like a promo copy, but just happens to be a white label. So I wasn't... Anyways, so uh, super classy. Uh, songs include stuff like More Beer. Hey. Uh, Strangulation. I Am A Doctor. Have A Beer With Fear. Bomb the Russians, uh, waving for the meat. Uh, the mouth don't stop. The trouble with women is. Ooh, this is not politically correct. I apologize. <coughs> I'm dying. But um, uh, one of the things here is a, a funny little thing. Maybe I just find it funny. Is that uh, there's a long line of, you know, like who plays bass, who plays guitar, yada, yada, yada. As well as the, who they wish to thank. And that includes a whole bunch of people that I don't know who they are, like uh, Dan Bates and uh, uh, Cherokee Studios, people you would let, you'd think, right? So it doesn't name a specific lawyer, but uh, the band thanks the entire legal profession. Uh, but to kick off this long list of people they thank, Fear wishes to thank Budweiser, King of Beers. Now a Miller man, but I still respect their uh, their desire to go out of their way. To thank Anheuser Busch. All right. Also, this is not an original. Um, big fan of the New York Dolls, and I never listened to uh, this album a whole bunch. I've heard things. Uh, this has come up in streaming mixes and things like that, and I've listened to this album briefly in passing. But I figured, you know, one of these days I'm gonna land it, and then uh, that's when I'm really gonna just take it in when I can uh, sit down and listen to it on uh, on record. Uh, OGs are just uh, non-existent in my world. I've never come across one. But I'm happy for this uh, 
just a couple of years ago, or now more than that, I guess, a 2011 uh, repress, and this is number 892 of 1500. Really, really, really clean. Happy to find it in this manner with a um, original inner sleeve, and I appreciate whoever was the original custodian of this record uh, taking care of it uh, so well. Uh, that is appreciated. But uh, uh, Johnny Thunders of the New York Dolls. Uh, pipelines on here. Uh, that's the kickoff. As everyone knows, uh, that that's a mainstay in the surf and drag realm. I'm a big fan of that. And then um, Daddy Rolling Stone, London Boys, Untouchable, Subway Train, yada, yada, yada. I'm trying to recall which one here is. I know there's a doo-wop cover on here as well. Like an old, uh, I think it's like a girl soul doo-wop group. Uh, that uh, Johnny covers. Also in the punk realm, this is something I've just been putting off buying because I don't find used, and I'm like, well, I keep on telling myself, one of these days I'll find it used and spend less money. I already paid for admission at the records, uh, the 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 flea market, so I was like, ah, oh, go and drop some money. So this is at Drive In. This is their 2017 uh, Get Back Together album. Um, I've just been avoiding buying it. This is still in the shrink until I buy find some better. Sleeves, I'll probably do that trick and steal it, so you guys aren't going to know what the guts are. Uh, lyric sheet, etc., etc., and I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but there's purple in the cover, and I was like, if you're going to do a colored pressing to make a point to tie it into the jacket, so the artwork is, a uh, was it congruive, conducive, insert a word that makes sense, I don't know, uh, my coffee hasn't kicked in yet. But, uh, all right, and here's a couple things, because I'm under 15 minutes, which is a rarity for me. Uh, I'm going to shove in some shit just for the sake of shoving some shit in. So, stuff I bought while looking for Record Store Day records. And if you're going to go to Record Store Day, hey, support your people out there. Uh, buy records. Uh, they only make so much money on new stuff, so you might as well buy used. All right, so this is a quick done beating around the bush. Here I am back at it. So this is what's weird about this one. For whatever reason, I, for the life of me, I'm not talking about now. Now it's almost become comedic where it's not that I can't find a clean copy of Black Sabbath Volume 4 or like I'm looking for a vertical swirl or some, you know, uh, I don't know if MoFi did a pressing of it or whatever, but I'm not looking for the most grandiose copy of Volume 4. I'm looking for any copy and I'm just not doing it. Another one I've never found you, you'd think is more rare than Volume 4 I stumbled into the Tony Iommi, um, not Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath album. Uh, this is post-Dio. Um, Brian's Vinyl Records was just showing this, and I was like, I've never seen that. And be careful what you put out there, because it might come to you. So I stumbled into this with the original inner sleeve. Um, clean record. Happy to have it. Um, really working on my uh, Sabbath collection now. I think I have everything... From the uh, Deep Sabbath, was it Born Again with the Evil Devil Baby, uh, to the, the Dio stuff, Mob Rules, I showed recently. I have Technical Ecstasy. So I think I have everything from this backwards, minus Volume 4, for whatever reason. But some uh, Black Sabbath, I dig it, man. I mess with the metal occasionally. I mess with the punk rock. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy jazz or whatever. I keep it eclectic. All right, so Frank at Pharmacy Records. Um... I guess I gotta thank, you know, um, Horizon Records here in town for having that, uh, that groundhog floating about, and then of course I buy the bulk of my stuff at pharmacies, really cool, Kevin Floor Records, Joe's a rad guy, yada yada yada, I'm pretty lucky to have a couple cool stores in town. But so, um, Frank ordered a, uh, order recently directly from, um, Third Man, so the price is right when you cut out a middleman. So I grabbed this. Uh, this is bookending the two, uh, or two of the three um, Dead Weather albums. I have the one with the, I can't recall the name right now, with the uh, almost like pagan like mass where it looks like there's a campfire, like glow and dark, but you know, like fire glow in the background. It's someone in the comment section fill in the blank that I'm not coming with it right now. Um, but this is not the middle album. Uh, you can still see my, the background here of, uh, you know, chair and coffee mug, etc. Everything in the background, because, uh, the shrink is that glossy. 
But so, anyways, I'm just filling in the gaps uh, on Jack White. I, I have very little left to do, minus the live albums. I wish they'd uh, repress the seven inches for um, the pollsters before he was really famous. And then, for whatever reason, uh, it's CD only for the, um, the one uh, White Stripes EP, which is like their second... Just before, just after their second to last album, I want to say it's off the uh, "Walking with the Ghost" with Tegan and Sarah. I'm getting sidetracked. Anyways, fuck that noise. This is what I do have. I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna tell you what I don't have. This is what I do have. Uh, I love the way they go about this. They don't make a big fuss on the cover about you know like 160 gram, 180 gram, 200 gram. None of that nonsense. It just is. This thing weighs 37 pounds. Um, if you threw it in someone's face like a frisbee. You'd knock their teeth out. Uh, so this thing's legit. It's done right. Uh, really nice, full, thick cardboard stock. Uh, like I say, I don't have any more outer sleeves that are of quality enough to steal hype stickers. So right now, you're not going to see the guts deal with it. Lyric sheets, words, etc. Just over 20 bucks. And if I didn't mention, a polyline sleeve. When as much as records are costing out, that's the way they should be. And if they're not that way, don't make a fuss of it. Like, this is much more esoteric, but within the same realm of Jack White. This is the henchmen. They weren't around prior to Jack White ever being in there and dropped uh, several albums, starting 91-ish, 92-ish, whatever. Um, so this is circa 98, if I'm not mistaken. But this is the henchmen, <clears throat> henchforth, and you could say it's with Jack White. So he's guest starred co-starred with him occasionally because he's isolated there and uh jack white obviously known for his guitar work uh being a, a duo in the uh, white stripes with his then wife uh and sometimes not wife uh meg white but on this all but two tracks he is the bass player so i'm filling this out so this is what i was getting at as far as uh financial discrepancies if you're gonna do something grandiose for an album that everyone covets and really wants in their catalog then, you know, you uh, fancy it up. You put lipstick on that pig. You dress it up. You put some all the accoutrements in there. But if it's something simple like this, it's still a decent jacket. It's nothing cheap or whatever, but the inside's just a paper sleeve. <clears throat> still a nice pressing. <clears throat> but uh, this is like whatever, like 17 18 bucks. So you don't make a huge fuss over it. New records don't have to cost $25, $30. But working on uh, completing the entire Jack White <clears throat> Rockin' Tours, Dead Weather, White Stripes Collection, and that's just one more piece of the puzzle. I'm pretty much already there, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the likes and thumbs up and all that jazz, the rigmarole that apparently is mandatory. Uh, more so than celebrating me and doing any of that nonsense, if you made a video, I'd like to support you. Uh, drop a message, drop a comment, and I'm happy to watch your video if you took the time to watch mine. <coughs> if not, hey, comment on whatever the hell you want. Insult me if you do, if you will. I don't give a shit. I still love you. Take care. God bless. All that jazz.